Radio Shouty. Now, Capone, let me get in here with you, man. I mean, the World Report, putting that album together with Nori. What was that like with Tragedy coaching y'all through the project and, you know, the pressure of you knowing that you was going to have to do some time, too? I mean, that was, you know, it was definitely deep because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I was a wild cowboy at that time. You know what I'm saying? So the pressure of trying to focus on the studio, wanting to go to the club, you know, just getting a check and having fun. And it was a lot of pressure, man. And knowing I only had six months to do this. I only had six months to live out this, this, this dream of having a record deal and doing my first fucking album. And you know, in six months, I got to go to jail. So it's like, you know, I had to get everything I had to get in. Whether it was music, whether it was chicks, whether it was clubs, and that's what I did. But we got it done. I wasn't on a lot of records because I, I was wilding. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was fun as hell. You know what I'm saying? Fun as hell. Time of my life, man. Word. Great six months to go to jail and be like, y'all niggas don't even know each other since six months. Word. Crazy. Now, songs like Tony, your verse on that, Biggie talking about, you know, he trying to get you in the mix at the same time, man. What was that like, your relationship with Biggie before he passed, and then knowing that you were supposed to be on that song with him all together, working together? Yeah, you know, like Big, Big was a great inspiration, man. You know, Big wanted to sign me to Junior Mafia, and I felt like just being the only Queens dude in the whole Brooklyn group wasn't going to work for me. <laughs> it was out of place. They were like, Brooklyn! You know what I'm saying? It was like a word. But I love the idea. You know what I'm saying? I love the fact that he seen, you know, the talent in me and, and, and wanted to see me go further. So, you know, eventually he would say, all right, I can't get you down with Junior Mafia, but I jump on a remix of this bracket. And so it happened that he went to LA and never made him back from LA, and I went to jail. Same time, you know what I'm saying? So it just so happened that the forces that that A B or that B didn't want to allow us because they may wanted to leave the T O Y the L A L A and all that alone. But it's unfortunately he still see it. You know? But you know, they definitely wanted to sign and I'd have, I'd have probably right now, you know, looking back, might have took that deal. Mm. I normally had six months. You know what I'm saying? But penalty stepped in. When folks like Big and Tupac die in the middle of y'all careers, how does that affect the trajectory of the things that y'all have going on at that time? Because, I mean, y'all still went on to be successful and do y'all things. We having a conversation right now because y'all still out here popping. So how do you think stuff would have been different if y'all would have been able to continue working with them kind of folks? Just striving and um, motivation is what it is, you know what I'm saying, for us to keep doing what we're doing, knowing that he come from the East, I come from the West, Biggie, Tupac, we all work with him. So let's come together and try to make a new, you know what I'm saying, because what's going on today with the new music, you know what I'm saying, that's yeah. about, you know what I'm saying, but we learn it, we adapt to it. It's all about taking everything this week, that week, <laughs> Put it together, right? And see what it tastes like. Make a soup, make a soup. <laughs> Answer me this, though, fellas. How do y'all feel now, at this point in your career, being able to still be vibrant and accepted and still be able to have your own movements? Because a lot of times, you know, hip-hop is growing up with us. You see what I'm saying? It was no predecessors before y'all like that that was... It wasn't that many, okay? You got your Ron DMCs and the uh, your Flash and the Mouse Grandmasters, everybody. But it wasn't a whole. Say what, Capone? You don't have generations. Exactly, it wasn't generations of it. So now, with y'all being a generation of rappers that's still rapping and still just as relevant, how do y'all feel about the atmosphere and the culture of it? Because I'm not no longer really seeing a divide between the young and the old like I used to. It's like music is just music again. You know why? Because they getting old too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, a lot of a lot of. Come on over here and join us too, motherfucker. You know you got your twenties right yeah, now. Yeah, but you know a lot of a lot of. Over here, sit down with us, motherfuckers. 
Yeah, Collect them royalty baby. checks and shut the fuck up. Now you feel how we feel. Now put you another project out. <laughs> <laughs> that the truth, though. Hey. Get in here, Capone. What was you about to say, man? Motherfuckers having babies like four at a time right now. You know what I'm saying? It's the pandemic. It's making niggas old. Niggas yeah. The, 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 the child support payments, like, hold up. Everything right. stopped. Nigga, Everything they thought, stopped. Nigga think it wouldn't stop. stop. But you have to be mentally you know? prepared and physically prepared, financially prepared for anything. You know what I'm saying? If you had that notion, nigga, you know, niggas like, hey, my end tomorrow, I'm finna blow it off. I think, I think, I think, honestly, though, I think that on a serious note, though, look, the, it's too much shit going on. The old niggas, the little niggas ain't got time to just the old heads no more, man. Niggas. 